In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, nuclear radius as well as the distance of closest approach. Put this one here with chemistry cat. Are you made of copper and tellurium? Because you're <laughs> cute. So let's start off with the nuclear radius. So what do we mean by this? We mean the not the, the whole distance of the entire atom because there's electrons floating around there. What we mean is how big is the actual nucleus? Remember the nucleus is what contains, now we know it's got the protons and neutrons in it. That's that radius there we're talking about. So we're going to have an atomic uh, a mass number. That's going to be the important thing right here. And maybe just remind ourselves how, uh, how we write these nuclides, you know, these things in general. Right here, this here is the mass number A. And Z is the number of protons. So remember, this right here is the number of protons plus neutrons. Whereas this right here is just the number of protons. Because just to make sure this is clear, this is the number of nucleons, basically, we call these. This is just the number of protons. That tells you which element it is. So if it's like Z is 1, you know it's the first element. It's hydrogen. If Z is 2, oh, you know that it's helium and so on. So given this, we can actually uh, find this. It's an equation in your formula book. You don't have to memorize it. It goes R equals R0. A, whoops, I should make a nicer 0 here, uh, times A to the power of 1 third. This is the equation. So what do we mean by these different things? Well, let's look at here. We've got nuclear radius. That'll actually be in meters. Uh, atomic mass number, it's a number of nucleons. It's that top number there. So for example, let's say we were looking at, uh, I don't know, let's say it was uh, helium. So like an alpha particle, this here would be the two and the four like this. We're talking about uh, the number of nucleons. It's this top number right here, four. So that would be, for example, what we would do here. All right, and this right here, R0, is the Fermi radius. It's this uh, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15. You can look it up in your data booklet. And it's also measured in meters. So let's remind ourselves on what happens with, remember, with Rutherford scattering. That's where we learn that it's an alpha particle. Remember, an alpha particle is just helium-4. So this alpha particle, which is positive, comes in, and it runs into, let's say, uh, a, a nucleus of, uh, this is Au, that's gold, for example. So it's gold-197. So it's a 79th element here, so it's got 79 protons. But what happens, remember, this has a positive charge. These have a positive charge. So because of that, then, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to come in. Let's just look at one that's head-on, exactly head-on. So we're just going to have it come in and actually just like turn around. Well, when it actually turned around right here, there's some point right there. That means we must be able to find some distance right here. This distance, I'll call it r. And that is the distance of closest approach. It's going to be related to this. We're going to try to find this distance r. All right, so just to reiterate, that's because the positive alpha particle, it's going to be repelled by the positive nucleus. How do we know the nucleus is positive? Well, it's got neutrons. They've got no charge. And it's got protons, which are positive. So a positive is going to be repelled by other positives. So that's why. And remember, we're going to call R, it's going to be just the distance of closest approach. Okay, so let's look at the energy of this alpha particle. Remember, that was, again, helium-4. I'm just trying to remind you. There we go. So at its closest approach, what happens? Well, remember, now it's coming in. For example, uh, we're just drawing it right here. So it's coming in like this right here. It's turning around. Here is the nucleus. And it's got this distance right here, R. That's what we're trying to find, this distance right here, R. Well, what's interesting is that it's all initial kinetic energy. When it first starts moving in, it's all kinetic energy, but then it's going to be all transferred to potential energy because at this point right here where it turns around, it's got zero kinetic because it stops. Does that make sense? So let's look at kinetic energy and let's look at potential energy, electric potential energy, that is. So for this gold nucleus, let's just remind ourselves what's going on here. This gold nucleus, remember, is AU. It's a uh, 79 protons and it's uh, 197 that's the number of nucleons so this kinetic energy remember let's just write this down so we've got kinetic energy here well that's going to be equal to at this point right here where it turns around at least at that point it's got that the initial kinetic energy is going to be all transferred to electric potential energy so let's make sure we look up these equations right here this is one half mv squared that you find in your formula booklet or data booklet we've got that equals and let's look up the electric potential energy well it goes k now normally it goes q1 q2 over r but i'm going to write 
big Q, little Q, just to make it a little bit simpler to look at, uh, over R. Now, what do we do about these Qs here? I think that's going to be the key thing. So big Q, that's the charge of the nucleus. That's this, this gold nucleus in this case right here. Okay, that's going to be the charge of that one. Now, how do we figure out the charge of that? Well, it turns out this number right here, remember this is Z, this is the number of protons, it's going to be that. In other words, in this case right here, it's going to be, well, 79 times E, the elementary charge. And you can look that up, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So we got that. All right, let's look at this, charge of an alpha. Well, remember what an alpha is, an alpha is helium two, All right? So that bottom number right here, that must be two then. So that's why we're gonna say equals two times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. All right, that's useful. So then let's try to figure out what we can do with this. Now keep in mind, this right here, we can actually be lazy right here and just leave it as, if we can just leave this as EK, like the initial kinetic energy. That means if I want to solve for R, then what do I do? Well, I can put, I can just say that EK, the initial kinetic energy, is just equal to, let's just manipulate this slightly just to make it easier, so equals KQ Q over R. That means that if I multiply R out, I'll get it to the front on the top, and this EK, I'll put it to the bottom. So it'll be KQ, big Q, little Q, over EK. So this I can say is my equation then for the closest approach distance. This is actually this, right? So, so that's the distance of closest approach. And this EK right here is actually just the initial kinetic energy. So when we talk about Rutherford scattering, which is, you know, when these alpha particles just go right through, remember Rutherford uh, scattering was, you know, alpha particles were essentially just going right through. Uh, and if you have these little gold atoms right here that most of them at least will go right through, sure. But some of them will indeed be deviated, you know, so some of them actually will turn around, some of them will actually be deviated. This sort of idea where these are positive particles here, these are the gold atoms. This Rutherford scattering right here, it doesn't hold true always because at very high initial energy, so in other words, if these alpha particles are coming in with really, really high energies, well, then the closest approach distance will come will become very small. And remember, that's because that equation we just developed right here. So R equals KQQ over EK. I'll maybe write that down again just to make it clear here. So R equals K, big Q, little Q over EK. Look, if you make this right here really, really large, dividing by a large number makes this right here small. Does that make sense? So this one right here, for example, you know, as EK goes up, R gets very small. Now at some point, you get so close, you know, in other, words, in other words, these initial energies are so high, it no longer obeys Rutherford scattering. So that's actually really interesting. It turns out actually that is evidence for uh, something called the strong nuclear force. Because this right here, by the way, we're always assuming that this is a repulsive force. You know, this positive here and the positive, they repel each other. That is true. But there must be something as you get closer and closer and closer to the nucleus that actually glues things together. So we'll learn later on that's actually uh, because of the strong nuclear force. So these deviations in Rutherford scattering are actually evidence for something called a strong nuclear force, where it's attracting things instead of repelling them. But that's good news because it actually keeps the nucleus together. If you think about it carefully, the nucleus, remember, if it's got a bunch of neutrons, okay, they don't really attract to repel each other, but a bunch of protons, shouldn't protons repel each other? In other words, shouldn't the nucleus tear itself apart? You might think so. If, there was, if it was only the electrostatic uh, repulsion, sure. But that's why there's this thing called a strong nuclear force that's Again, nuclear, because it's in the nucleus, and it's very, very strong, and it's attractive. It's enough to keep everything together, and it's way stronger than the repulsion, this Coulomb repulsion, as we can sometimes call it. So in this example, we have a gold nucleus. So again, good old gold 197, right? And it has an alpha particle fired at it. Don't forget what an alpha particle is. An alpha particle is, I hope I'm being annoying, because that's good, then you'll learn this. Alpha particle is a helium-4. All right, so we have the initial kinetic energy of the alpha particles, 21 mega electron volts, and it bounces straight back from the gold nucleus. In other words, it does this, what we were talking about before here, you know, this, uh, this exact thing here is happening. So step one, what's the nuclear radius of the gold nucleus? So in other words, we just need to find this nuclear radius. We need R equals R, 
zero a to the one third. Now we just got to remember what everything is, right? So we've got to put in first of all what is r zero. We know that r zero. We just look it up. It's one point two zero times ten to the oh what was it? Was it minus minus fifteen meters? Okay, good. So we'll put that in. So minus fifteen meters. Okay. Well, if it's gold, what does that mean? Uh, what is the A value? Remember that A, if I just look at this near, this is gold here. Uh, this is 197. This is uh, 79. This A value is actually this one right here. A is this one. Okay, so that means what do I do then? I just say, well, A is going to be just 197. That's nice. So I can say then that R is going to be, let's see, I'll just put in all the numbers here. So 1.20 times 10 to the minus 15, all that times 197 to the power of 1 third. I'll get out my good old calculator for this and I'll actually calculate it. So again, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15, all that times open brackets, and I'll say 197 to the power of fraction 1 over 3. Boom, I end up with 6.98 times 10 to the minus 15, which should make sense. It should be something along the lines of the Fermi radius at least. Now if I'm only allowed two significant figures, well then I should state my final answer then. The radius then must be uh, approximately then, let's just see, I only want two significant figures, so 6.9, but this eight means it rounds up. So that means I'm actually gonna say 7.0 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. There is my radius of the gold nucleus. All right, let's look at the second part of this question, which is what's the distance of closest approach of the alpha particle? So in other words, when it comes in, it turns around right here, let's find this distance of closest approach. Well, again, let's remember what happens at closest approach. At closest approach, we have EK equals EP, because this isn't an equation you get necessarily, not exactly this, on your data bucket, so it's important to know what to do here. So that means that I'm going to leave this as an EK here, so EK equals, and now what is EP? This is, again, the electric potential energy. It's K times big Q times little q, although in your data booklet it says Q1, Q2 over R. So I'm just going to manipulate this and solve for R. That means I'm going to get that R equals, let's see now, it's going to be, I move this up, so it's got K, big Q, little q, over E, K. This is the equation I'm going to need to solve. If I can just solve this, I'm good to go. So let's maybe start solving things and writing down what's what. So first of all, what's K? K is the Coulomb constant. And you can look this one up. It's 8.99 times 10 to the 9 uh, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Now what about Q? It's the charge of the gold atom. Remember how we do the charge? It's basically going to be the number of protons, so in this case 79, so it'll be 79 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. All right, that's important to know. And this one here, lowercase q, well that will be, let's see, it's going to be the charge of the alpha particle, but an alpha particle has two so this one here is going to be 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Of course, these are coulombs. And notice, by the way, then, if you have k, it's per coulomb squared, and we've got a coulomb and a coulomb. In other words, all the coulombs are going to cancel each other out, which is nice. Let's actually calculate the kinetic energy. Well, we need the kinetic energy in joules. Right now we have it in, uh, let's see, we have it in mega electron volts. So let's convert that. So 21. Mega, by the way, means 10 to the 6. Uh, so now we've got 21 mega. And what's an electron volt? Mm, well, we've got to figure that out. So one electron volt is actually just 1 uh, times the charge of the electron, which is minus 19, times 1 volt, which is just uh, 1. And this right here is this is joules. So what do I get then? I just multiply 21 times 10 to the 6 times 6 times 10 to the minus 19, and I've got my answer, kinetic energy, in joules. Well, that means then if I want to do it all, I just put in all the numbers. And so that means R equals, I'll just put them all in here. So K, which was 8.99 times 10 to the 9. All that times, let's see, Q, which is 79 
times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times little q, which is 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. All that divided by ek, which is 21 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Do you notice how we've got this 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 a lot? Maybe I can cancel out that one and that one maybe. That'll be a little bit simpler. And let's just do this on my trusty old calculator. So I'm just going to do a big old fraction, and I'm going to say all right, 8.99 times 10 to the 9, all that times 79, all that times uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and all that times 2, because don't forget there was a 2 there. Divide that whole thing by 21 times, uh, well, I guess uh, times 1 times 10 to the 6, because that's mega, and that's it. So if I do this right here, I get 1.0822, let's just say. But I'm only allowed uh, two significant figures, I think it is, because I've, always think, yeah, I've only got two here. So I'm going to say that means then the closest approach radius then must be approximately equal to one point, let's see, that'll be a one times 10 to the minus 14 meters. Now you can double check that it makes sense. Well, it should be something, you know, close to, you know, approximately the size of an atom radius at least. So it should be something like 10 to the minus 14. If you got like 10 to the 15 positive or 10 to the three, that's like in kilometers, of course that shouldn't be the case. So you should have an idea, that, yeah, it should be really small numbers and this is. So do you see we've learned about how to use the uh, nuclear radius equation as well as how to find the distance of closest approach.